Hi, I'm Daniel Steinberg from Dim Sum Thinking with three tips for swift development. I won't be offering the usual pieces of advice today like favoring immutability, that's lets over vars or value types, and nooms and structs over classes. Of course you should be using library functions and I expect that you're embracing enums and generics and higher order functions, but those are the usual pieces of advice. Let's look at three others. For instance, keep up with Swift evolution. With stability we've gotten in Swift, of course the code that you wrote yesterday still works, but it looks different than the code that we write today. It'll also keep your code more in sync with the code that we see from Apple. For example, here's a simple Swift UI view with a state property that's message. We display the message in the text field and our button will change the message. And so we pass a closure as the action that changes the message to hello world. Previously, we had to use self before message because we were capturing self. We could capture it there, or more recently, we could use a capture list to capture it like this. In a struct, we don't need to capture it at all, and we can just write the simpler message equals hello world. That's courtesy of Swift Evolution 269, implicit self, explicit capture. As another example, we now have disclosure groups in Swift UI. So for instance, if you look at arrow, I'm showing some items underneath it, these icons, and I'm doing that using a disclosure group. Now here's how we create a disclosure group. It has what it is that we're displaying, so you can see the disclosed grid with the symbols that I'm displaying, and also there's a label with the text root name. And that looks a little bit odd because we've got disclosure group with two trailing closures. The first trailing closure is what we display, and the second trailing closure is that label, that word arrow. These multiple trailing closures are again courtesy of Swift evolution. And so the code that we write will evolve along with Swift itself. The second tip is to use extensions liberally. I use extensions all the time. Now, of course, if you have a struct like this, we would tend to put the custom string convertible in its own extension. We do that all the time. We might also, in the old days, have added an extension for equatable and implemented equatable like this. Now, we don't have to implement equatable anymore. We can just declare that vertex conforms to it. In this case, I would move it back up to be part of vertex because then someone looking at our code can tell right away that it's equatable and there's no implementation that we have to move elsewhere. More controversial is something that I tend to do with Swift UI views. For instance, here I have a display view that has two properties. One is a vertex that's called location and the other is a message. And here's how I display it in the body. Now it's not important how I display it or what this thing does. What I want to talk to you about is that I will often separate these into two pieces. In the main struct, that's the memory footprint. That's the properties. Those are the things that are memory stored. That's the what of this display. And I'll move to the extension, the part that conforms to view that just displays it. That's partly because this gets pretty long and it's easy to think that this is part of the memory footprint, but this is very cheap. This is the what we see part of it. It's a computed property inside of a struct consisting only of value types. The third quick tip is to embrace result builders. Now, they've been called function builders for a long time. They're currently called result builders, but by the time this video releases, uh, they may be called something else. It's currently going through Swift evolution, and so whatever this ends up being called, we use it already with the V stack. That's enabled because the init takes an alignment, which has a default value, a spacing, which has a default value, this last parameter is a function that returns the content. This is the same idea as the function builder. And so the idea is if I create a VStack, I might or might not specify the alignment or the spacing, but I have to specify the content. But because it's a closure, I can move it outside as a trailing closure. And so that looks really nice like this. As function builders or result builders or whatever they end up being called uh, get adopted, you can create your own types like this and they make your code really clean like vstacks and other familiar items from Swift UI. So embrace result builders, use extensions liberally, and keep up with Swift evolution.